Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we'll be shedding more light on how batteries are made and we will do so with Cameron Keating, Head of Production and Maintenance at Innobat Auto. You may have also noticed that we have left our offices and are currently in Vodjaradi, our future R&D and pilot production facility, which we are currently preparing for reconstructions. So with all this said, kick back and relax, and I welcome you to enjoy the sixth episode of our Battery Academy. Cameron, tell us a bit about yourself. My name is Cameron Keating. I'm from the USA. I've been manufacturing lithium-ion batteries for 13 years in both the United States and in China. Okay, so we're extremely happy to have you on the team and all the experience that you bring to Innobat. Uh, concerning the Battery Academy, uh, our audience already knows what batteries are made of and have a rough idea about the supply chain. So Cameron, tell us what will happen to all of the components once they enter our doors in the future? So components are first checked for incoming quality. Once they pass uh, that inspection, then they'll move into a production area, which will be here in the future. So first, there's three areas to make a battery. There's the making of the electrodes, then the assembly of the stack, and finally formation. So we'll start just about here will be the mixers. And we have dedicated lines for both anode and cathode. So first we mix cathode and anode slurries in separate rooms and Important to mention, this is where we add the lithium powder as part of the cathode slurry. The slurry is coated onto copper or aluminum foil, and it goes through an oven, which is to dry off the liquid. And then we get to the dry side of the coater. We have a nice even coating of slurry on those films. After that, we move to calendaring. And this is where we put the dry slurry coated on the film through two wheels at very high pressure. Okay, and what does calendaring achieve? Calendaring is very important to the process because we're increasing the density of the coated material on the films. And this is very important to the performance of the cell. We want the most contact that we can at a molecular level. And all of this that we're talking about, it's happening in the temperature control of dry rooms, right? Absolutely. Uh, moisture is our enemy. So all of the rooms here are kept at a dew point of uh, at least minus 40 C in an effort to reduce how much moisture is in the battery. What is the next step? The next step is assembling the stack. So the first part of that is we need to take notches out of uh, these rolls, which then get fed into magazines. And then we assemble these into a stack with a Z fold. <clears throat> so cathode, anode, cathode, anode with separator and a Z fold in between. So then that stack is taken, put, placed into a pouch. That pouch is deep drawn from aluminum foil. Then that pouch is sealed up, and then we add electrolyte, which is the liquid that allows the lithium ions to shuttle back and forth between the anode and the cathode. At this point, we have a sealed battery that's almost complete. Then uh, we get to formation and aging, right? Uh, what is that good for? Formation is the first time you pulse electricity through your cell. This is very important because there's chemical reaction that takes place to form an SEI layer, and this also sets the performance of your cell. And the camera, what type of battery formats are we going to be producing in this facility? We plan to make both pouch cells and cylindrical cells here. So these are two different formats. Pouch cell is basically more of what I just described to you of the stack being placed into a pouch. A well, cylindrical cell, we add a step where we slit the rolls into a much thinner roll and then we wind them instead of Z folding and that wind, which we call a jelly roll, is inserted into a can. And that's a smaller format, but also still very useful in many industries. So the audience could like, uh, kind of like imagine these two formats as a larger table of chocolate for the pouch cell and for the cylindrical one as the types of the batteries you put into your remote controls and other electronics, but a bit bigger. Exactly. I'm quite like, interested in the charge level of the batteries that leave this facility. So how do we approach that? All our cells leave here at 30% SOC or state of charge, which is a reasonable amount. Um, it's a good balance between being a safe level of charge and also maintaining the quality of the cell during transportation and storage. So I assume at the end there is some testing and the batteries are ready to go. Of course, uh, all our batteries will go through uh, some extensive testing to make sure that they're leaving here at the, only the highest quality level. Okay. So now we know how batteries are made. Cameron, thank you very much. Thank you.
Cameron just gave you a brief introduction into battery production, so now you know how they are made. In the next episode, you'll learn how they are recycled, so see you in a month, and I look forward to seeing you.